the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How good is that? <laughs> It is Fitzy and Weber with Kate Ritchie. Welcome to the Thursday podcast. Got got a really interesting woman coming in very soon. A lot of people have questioned this, but she rang in the show earlier in the week and she claims that she had a couple of security guards come up and say, at the slip-in 20-odd years ago, that man over there is pretty keen to have a drink with you. That man turned out to be Prince Frederick. And this was before Frederick laid his eyes on Mary. Oh my God. On, the, on the very same night. What on the story. same night. Could you I wanna, imagine? I want to know how quickly it was. Like, how quick did he divert from mm-hmm. this, from Fiona's her name? She's going to come on the podcast. You'll hear it very soon. How quickly did he divert from her eyes to Mary's eyes? Fascinating. Enjoy. Fiona and then I wonder the if there's anyone else on the night, Kate. That he may have had a crack. Well, that just haven't had, haven't managed to kind of come mm. out with their story. It'd be one to dine out, though, oh, yeah. though wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. That'd be a great meal to dine out. Yeah, on. that would be that I would be great. That. It's all in the podcast. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Let's talk about Hooters. What? Oh no, Jess, this is the Hooters, and we dance. Do you know what? I, do you know there's certain songs in your life that transport you back to where you were. Oh, I love that. Okay, so nippers. I used to do surf lifesaving, right? And I could never do the swim because the swim you'd have to go out quite far. I was mm-hmm. a bit freaked out by sharks and stuff, and I could never do the swim. And I remember that the first it took me about a year to do it, and the the time that I did it on Rage that morning was that song, yeah. the Hooters and, and we you, dance, and it takes you straight back there, and it takes me straight back to doing my the, the swim for the first time. Do you know, there needs to be a word invented that. Um, represents when you're taken back to a moment yes. through a sound, a smell, or a sight. I agree. I agree. It's, <laughs> Is it it's... called memory? Isn't <laughs> yeah. it just nostalgia? No, it's not, Jess. That can no. be something much different and deeper and experienced differently. So back to Hooters, mate. Yeah, now Hooters, the restaurant. Oh, um, right, your favourite. Yeah, I want to talk about a man who has had an amazing life. Harry Perez Cerezo is his name. He's a retiree from Texas. He's a World War II and Korean War veteran. He received a Purple Heart. He celebrated his 101st birthday wow. at Hooters. And this is a Hooters chant. Oh. <laughs> How could you not love that? Okay, so he had never heard, Harry had never heard of Hooters. And his niece and nephew took him there for the first time on his 101st birthday. And his his niece said, I have never seen him cry. And we saw him cry there. His tears (laughs) just came rolling down. (laughs) He can now die a happy man. He said his uncle, uh, uh, she said, Josie said her uncle doesn't like to talk about the wars because he gets teary-eyed thinking about the good buddies that he lost. Mm -hmm. When they asked what he wanted um, to do for his milestone birthday, he thought of his days as a GI and joked that he wanted wanted his niece and nephew to take him somewhere where he could see some behind. Mm, See some booty. Do you know what's interesting? I mean, finally, he's been honest with his family about what he wants to do on his birthday. I'm just hoping he doesn't make it to a Hundred and two, because now he's warming up. Harry might want to head down yeah. Sunset Strip there, Fitz, and you know what happens there. I mean, Harry's gone from Hooters to bikinis. What is next for this guy? <laughs> he liked the atmosphere. He liked the girls and the customers. He said everyone was coming in and buying him a drink or greeting him, and he really enjoyed all of that. He took it all in. He said, I will be coming back here until I turn 105. And his niece was going, why is he fixated? He's 101. Why is he fixated on 105? And his doctor said, because that's when I told him when his pacemaker was going to run out. So he said, just bring me back to Hooters every year until I die. <laughs> what a great story. How it's a happy beautiful is Harry. story. Look at him. You know he would have had the hot dog or the chilli dog with ham. <laughs> like when we were in LA and we everybody got to choose a restaurant we could go to. <laughs> Tommy, we found some extremely fine dining. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yes. wonderful. Yes. It's it's beautiful. You boys hate your fine dining. And then it came to you, Ryan. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Where do you is- know? Harry was there at the bar with Ryan. And it was one of the best nights. I cried that night as well. I, <laughs> well, I cried when I saw the bill at the restaurant that you took us to. You're only a what if away from a New Year 
get away with whatif.com. Aussies just know how to holiday. It's in our DNA. Book your accommodation, flights, car hire and more all on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. This is exciting. Now, Kate, you weren't in the studio the other day because it was around 6.30 in the morning, Fitz, when we took a, a, a phone call from a girl by the name of Fiona. Fiona had a phenomenal story to tell about the night at the slip-in when Prince Princess Mary or Queen Mary met Frederick on that night. And we welcome her now to the studio. Fiona, great to have you in. Thank you for having me. Fiona, for Good those night. who haven't heard the story, and Kate, obviously, as I mentioned, weren't here. Well, wasn't you keep here. saying I wasn't here. I was just, yeah, it was before seven. It was before seven. Yeah. So I was Certainly. listening in the car, sure. wondering who Fiona was. Could you tell us the story that you shared with the audience? Okay, so I was at the slip in, group of friends, and we're all there and we're having drinks and music's on and we're having a good time. Just really enjoying Sydney. It was the Olympics time. I was having a particularly good hair night. Really? I'm feeling right. good, you yeah. know, life's yeah. awesome. Looking amazing. And these, well, I don't know about that, but yeah. these two guys come up to me in suits and say, there's a guy over here that wants to meet you. And I've gone, yeah, that's nice, but I'm engaged. Yeah. And also I'm here with a group of friends. And plus, who sends their minders yeah. over? Yeah. Like, you know, who has minders? Who has mm. minders? Yeah, who is and this guy? And I looked guy? over and there's a sort of booth thing and he's sitting there and everyone, you could tell that he's important because everyone's body language, right. they were all faced in and there were guys in suits, big guys standing around. And I thought that doesn't look like fun. It was like quiet and empty. And so they wandered off and then they came back about 10 minutes later and they go, so he really wants to meet you. And I'm like, yeah, same answer as before. Still engaged, still here with friends. Yeah. And they've gone, but he's a prince. And I've gone, ooh, 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 better have a think about this. And I've gone, <laughs> oh my God. yeah, but mm, my family, mm, my adventures, all the things I've done, they're going to uncover a whole lot of skeletons. <laughs> it's going to be bad. Plus, how boring. I mean, we saw it didn't work with Diana, did it? Oh, but no. did you, but it, were, were you, you, did you waver at all, though? I mean, like you're saying, I know it may have looked mm. boring, but when you see someone that appears to be important, there's a lot of people around. Yeah. Out of all those people in that par- bar, they came over to you. Was there a part that thought, oh, it might be quite I'm nice to just go and flattered by that. drink? I mean, I mean, even if it was just being inquisitive. I think it was more about... Why don't you come over here? Where's oh. the bottle of champagne? Plus, where's the white charger? Yeah. You know, yeah. you're a prince, mate. Lift your game. You yeah. should have manners. Oh, yeah. you, you should have said that to the security guard. So that that moment happened. And then I think you mentioned in the story as well that not long after or a while after, you saw him sitting with a, what I assume was Princess Mary. Yeah. How, what was the time difference there? Like, do you think that they approached you first and then half an hour later... I'd like to make that up and say yes, but there were drinks on board. Yeah, right. So I'm not completely (laughs) sure. I know he was sitting by himself when they approached me, and then there were people around him, more people around him. So I don't really know the The timeline, but that's my experience with it. If you were, if you weren't engaged, Fiona, mm. were you before that when you were single? Mm. Would have you been more adventurous and went over and, and definitely had a chat and, and maybe t- taken it a bit further? Look, you'd be silly not to. Um, Did you find him attractive? He was in a suit and he's got a head and shoulders. He seemed alive. <laughs> he seemed you know, breathing. <laughs> he had a pulse. Yeah, he'd, have a, he'd, have, he'd have a dowry. Yeah. There'd be money involved. So right. those sort of things are minor attractions. Yeah. But, but did you think for one moment that they may be making it up? Because, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of men go out and meet girls mm-hmm. in bars or certainly did back then and would make up a few little white lies. I'm a racing car driver yeah. or I'm a doctor or I'm still studying this to get it over the line. Was it very obvious that he was who they were saying he was? It was pretty obvious that he was legit because they were big guys in suits, but everyone looked really Mm well-groomed. And there was just an air about the place of, you know how when there's someone important in the room, 
Like like you'd all know when you guys are in the room. Big time. <laughs> Big time. Radio well, royalty. Very well said. Thanks. And do you think that he was there on the night? Like, does he do this from city to city? Or do you think in his mind he thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to meet an Australian woman that I might marry? Well, maybe it was strategic. Maybe maybe Denmark wants some oil and some... They want some <laughs> rare minerals. Yeah. They're after some steel. Yeah. Who knows what the deal was. Yeah. But I think he was on the make that night. So he was on a mission. This is a sliding doors moment, though. It is. Absolutely. When you, th- when you look back, uh, and I mean, can I ask you, Fiona, because you've obviously seen the life of Mary. She's had children now. There's obviously been a bit of a scandal this year as well. Mm-hmm. How would have you... I mean, if it, let's just say you went down that path. How would have you handled the last 20-odd years if it was you? I would have lasted about six months. Right. <laughs> Got the diamond. The naughtiness is strong in this one. Right, okay. okay. You know, so you wouldn't have you wouldn't have conformed. Well, uh, I mean, I, you, we, we've watched uh, Mary's journey, and even just that everyone was so impressed when she began learning her yeah, the, 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 the language and all of mm. the rules and regulations, and we we saw it not work with. Megan as well, yep. you know, like it's a it's a big undertaking, isn't it's, it? I don't think it's as much fun as it's made out to be. And no, I'm not that much into jewellery. Look mm. at me, there's not much on here. Yeah. And I was doing okay at the time, and yeah. I've got you know, it's not all about money. <laughs> and, the, and then you you um, you didn't end up marrying the guy you were engaged to at the time. No, but I was really happy with him for a long time. Right, okay. and we had a really good run. So outside of you being approached and the moment you saw um, Frederick and, and Mary, did you see anybody else get approached? No. No. No, I don't think so. I don't know. So, I mean, I was in a bar and I, it was sort of like that happened. Yep, yep. He's over there. I'll leave him to it. Didn't even send champagne. Yeah. You know, <laughs> lift your game, mate. Yeah. Now, you, you, and you uh, don't do know it's going to go on to where it where no. it you, you, no, no, well, Look, um, you, uh, you've spoken about this on air. What have your friends spoke? You, you, you've you kept this quiet to yourself for 20-odd years, haven't yeah. you, Fiona? Yeah. Not many people know about this. So no one even knew that you were on radio the other day when you rang <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it's a brag, you know. It is. It is. And it's brag. just I could do with brightening up my week. And when I heard you on Monday morning <laughs> talking about Frederick, I was like, I've got to tell You've that got to story. Tell story. Yeah. I hadn't even told my sister about it. I mean, I only told my dad about three months ago. Oh. And to be honest, I sort of brushed it aside. And about six months later, I saw Mary, and it was all about Mary from Australia. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, oh. that could have been me. Uh, oh yeah. But I had a. I mean. I've had some really good times otherwise. Yes. What, and what's, your, wanted... what's, your, what's your current relationship status at the moment, Fiona? <laughs> Auditioning. Auditioning. Oh, dear. <laughs> For other princes. <laughs> well, Kate, you and Kate could go after the son. He's just turned 18. Oh, Kate's pretty oh, keen on his. Give me a break. Oh, Prince, oh, Prince no, Christian. Give us a bit of credit. Can you, exactly. Can, and, and is he? would have he been the only person of note that you may have dated? I may have dated some other high achievers. Oh, Fiona. Oh, hey. What industry? Sporting industry? We're talking music or what are we talking here? How much are you paying? <laughs> okay. More than one, Fiona? Or, uh, uh, still- I've had a great time and I haven't aimed to date anyone famous and it just happens that I have adventures. Yes, that, uh, well said. You know what I think? There's a book in your life, oh not only God. Mary's. Yeah. There's a drama Fiona. series to be played by Kate Ritchie. <laughs> and yeah, the thing no. is, Kate, it's still happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still happening. <laughs> written the final scene, have we? Mate, well, the, the best bit's yet to come, oh, I say. Oh, wow. oh, this is great. Well, Fiona, thank you very much for your time. We, we would promote your book, but we're trying to offload some other book that we've got in the well, studio. Well, the Fatu Personal Trainer. And um, it's a book that I wrote, Fiona, so I'll give And you a we copy can't of get that. rid of them all, so well, very important you can take one with you. That. And also, I haven't written a book. So no. we'll get oh, on to that. It's, yeah, it's a work in progress. Fiona, thanks for coming in. Great <laughs> sure. to chat. Thanks. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Is Nicholas Cage still in the country? We haven't had a Cage update. with my cat!
I don't know. We I need mean, to get Annie on the phone. Remember Annie oh, from the grocer? The Asian That's grocer. Right. Yes. The Chinese grocer. Yeah, um, he was over there filming a movie over in WA. I know um, Anna Diamas was here as well. Anna Diamas? She's amazing. She went, she went out with Ben Affleck, yeah. Yep. And great actress as well. Sydney Sweeney's been here. We've had some big celebrities. Didn't know this guy snuck into the country as well. Liam Neeson is here. What's he doing? So Liam Neeson is in a tiny little um, town in the Gippsland region in Victoria mm-hmm. of Walhalla. Now, Walhalla used to be Australia's richest town, home to over 4,000 gold seekers. Now it's a quiet little village with only 20 residents. Oh, He's out there. How's this for the movie? So what is he filming? It's called Ice Road 2, Road to the Sky. Wow. He How's this? He's Neeson's character Mike McCann travels to Nepal in the sequel to scatter his brother's ashes on Mount Everest, but clashes with Nepalese mercenaries oh. along along the journey. <laughs> Give me a break. So, so they've made th- that little town like a, a, meant to be a town in Nepal. I would assume yeah. that's the second part of the film. I assume yeah. that starts with the ashes and Mount Everest, he's, and then they go to the town, do they? And then he's just throwing, he's just throwing Sherpas off a cliff. You know, this is this is his role. Oh. Tommy, we tried to get him on the show, but apparently this was his response. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I have a special set of skills. What a film! Like, is there a better film than Taken? Taken and Dumb and Dumber. <sighs> Because you just, you just know. <laughs> That's a very big call. Oh, my Taken gosh. Taken is such a great f- I can't it, wait for my is. kids to be old enough to watch that. I haven't seen it. You haven't to seen Taken? Taken? Yeah, no. it, it is. No. Kate it's, Ritchie. That scene there, Kate, play yeah. it again. You can hear it in his voice there, Jess. I don't know who you are. But that's he basically says, give me back my daughter or mm. else I have a special set of skills. I will track you down and have I will listen. find you and I will kill you. You got the whole thing. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. I will find you and I will kill you. Oh, I've got goosebumps. Oh, Anyone that, else got goosebumps? How old was he there? Oh because when I saw this story, I read that he's 71. Is he? Is he 71? So, so when was Taken made? Oh, 20 God. years ago? E- 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 easy. Four years. Yeah, 2008, guys. It's such oh. a good film. Yeah, it's okay. great. I'll well, he's it. in. Well, he's not here in New South Wales, but he's in the country. Tommy, Liam get him Neeson, on. everyone. Get, get him bat, on, Tommy. This time you tomorrow. Know, thank you. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Fitz, as a parent, uh, you would say that you almost, and I, th- I think what I like about becoming a parent is you become a full-time problem solver and you have to perform miracles on a daily basis. Well, you wing it. A majority yeah, of the you time wing you wing it. it. You you're wing not it. correct, but you know, in your kid's eyes, you, you are. You've got it. And you're, you're right. You're the messiah. And when they say, how c- can we do that or how does that work or is it possible? You go, yeah, watch this. But yeah. you say it without knowing how you're going to do that. We had an emotional one and Tom if you want to chase Dr. Chris Brown or possibly David Attenborough here. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a late ask. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sure, that's a sure. very late ask. I should have thrown that out <laughs> earlier. Um, there was a miracle performed by yours truly on the holidays. Um, Jack, we're in Queensland, and Jack found, and he's like, he think, he wants to be the next Steve Irwin or the next Robert Irwin. He wants to be the man with the animals. So um, if there's beetles, spiders, you name it, Jack's on it, and he'll tell you all the details about um, that animal or the insect. So he found a rhinoceros beetle. Have you ever seen a rhino beetle? That's the one with the massive head, isn't it? It's, it's got a huge, huge head. Yeah. head. Yeah. And they're a big, big beetle. Like, uh, I'm talking seven centimetres, eight centimetres. It's where where big, did he find that? Big thumping beetle. It was dead by the side of the pool oh. where we were staying. And, and it gathered a crowd too, Fitz, because everybody went, have a look at this beetle. Anyway, he picked it up and he went, oh, Dad, this is a rhino beetle, but it's died. I'm not sure why. And we left it sort of by the pool. He wanted to put it up on this bench that was by the pool. Just we, to remember, yeah. Just to remember a, the beetle um, yeah, and right, to study okay. it. I had to come in <laughs> with my phone and then take all these photos from different angles so we could then zoom in and look at the fine detail of the beetle. Um, anyway, then he decided maybe, <laughs> because we've done it before, if he finds a great leaf or a flower, we 
spray it with wax and sometimes we'll put it in a frame and we'll be able to keep that forever. He wanted to take the beetle home and spray it with wax and keep the beetle forever. So a day or two passes and we've got the dead beetle in the apartment where we were staying. Then he said, Dad... How could the beetle come back to life from this life? Could it just be sleeping? And I went, the beetle's dead, mate. I'm sorry about that. It's not bad. You could have lied there. But you know what, Fitz? As a dad, as a full-time problem solver, I went, what do beetles like? And beetles... Juice. Beetle juice? (laughs) As it turns out, they do. Beetles like citrus products or, or natural citrus... Um, fruits. How do you know that? Because I googled it. What oh, do beetles right, okay. want? Right? So yeah. then we p- we've got this dead beetle in a container. I picked up the beetle's mouth, like a beetle, and by its mouth I just put its mouth on a wedge of orange. Oh and I rested gosh. the beetle's mouth on the orange. Yeah. It's yeah. a little citrus f- fiend there with its helmet on looking hard. And he's there with his little mouth underneath on the citrus, on the goodness. All of a sudden, I see his front leg start to move. Scratching almost like a little fox digging a hole. A little foxy foxy in the dirt, in the long grass. The beetle starts to move. One leg, two leg, three leg, four. How many has he got? Six. Beetle, beetle has come back to life. And so here I w- am as the problem solver. Going, it was alive the whole time. Well, it didn't move and it was upside down. It was as dead as it had every sign of death besides being squashed that death well, that's, has. That's probably it was just dead. That was a mechanism. Obviously, it's a defence mechanism. They it was thought on that, a bench by the pool for two days. You've taken it away from its family and for two if days. If it was worried about it at night, it could have nicked off back to its rhino family, but it didn't. The beetle was dead. The orange brought the beetle back to life. So the next thing, you know, I don't know if you've seen these beetles. They start hissing when they start to fire. They go, shh, shh. So the beetle... <laughs> The beetle came back to full strength. And the next morning when Jack woke up, the beetle's running around in the container, snacking on the orange. It's and, fully alive. And I just looked at Lisa and I went, is there anything this bloke can't do? Oh I'm my not calling God. myself Jesus or God or something supported by a higher power, but I performed a miracle for the children. Well, if that works, can we get an orange to John Lennon's grave? <laughs> it's not. That is not going to work. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Can we talk about... Oh, this is amazing. Amazing news. It's the Gold Coast. It's just everything... Do you know the best things happen on the Gold Coast, don't they? Hmm? I'm a, just... You got like. schoolies up there, but you've got the theme parks. Yeah. You've got New Year's Eve, mate. And I know you went out on a cruise in the harbour here to see the fireworks up there, but there was a few problems up on the Gold Coast, just off Main Beach there. Have a listen to this story. Who steered a New Year's Eve cruise into a sandbank, sparking a mass marine rescue, has given a bizarre excuse for drinking on the job. More than 100 passengers forced to bring in the new year with water police. Their skipper steering the cruise aground in the broad water. Keith Tyra PPP Kippenberg in too deep, caught drunk. His lawyer says there were issues with the motor and he did intend to move towards shallow water. But the excuse for drinking he didn't know he was doing it, claiming he thought alcoholic hard solo was soft drink. <laughs> he blew Keith. point. Now, 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 Keith. Keith, hey. can we can we hear his name again, there, please? Keith yes, Tyra P P P Kippenberg. That's a bit. That's a Keith big hyphenated Tyra name, isn't it? P P P P P P P. Keith Tyra P P P Kippenberg. P P P Kippenberg. I thought the Kippenberg part was the name of the boat. Oh my God, Keithy Pippenberg. Just you know what? You just go with Keith with that one, don't you? Anyway, he. Blue point one four nine. Now, 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 Keith. He's had a crack at it. Keith, I think you know when you point one four nine that these may not be soft drinks. <laughs> Could he not tell that? I mean, when he left, when he left the, um, what do you call a, what do you call a cockpit on a boat? The helm. 
Um, when he left oh, the steering wheel and went and joined the party, <laughs> that's when I reckon Keith would have known, hang on a minute, there's something in this solo. There's well, it's, definitely something going on here. Everyone's been talking about this, haven't they? Because it was, I think, hard solo was quite popular. Up, up at school, he's on the Gold Coast as well. But it's like... You know what, Keith? You can have a couple of solos. You think that they're solos first up, mm-hmm. but when you're driving the boat and you're playing a bit of Darude Sandstorm and you're dancing away thinking, I'm feeling pretty good here, yep. stop drinking solo. And the other thing as well, to get to 0. 0.149, Jeez. right, you would have to drink, I reckon, around about... I reckon about... 12, 12 <laughs> drinks to get to that stage. How now, strong is hard solo? I now, didn't even I didn't know this existed. I'm a bit with Keith. Like I thought solo was solo. You got to you know work it hard to be. Solo. Crack a solo. Well, Keith cracked 15 solos oh, and he was what? driving the boat. And then cracked the hull of the boat. Well done, Keith. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. I've got an amazing one to kick off the year. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I, I mean, everybody does this, but you can get paid a lot of money. Didn't know. Have a listen to this. Okay, here is a side hustle so weird that you have never heard about but pays bank. You're going to start by going to humanmicrobes.org. Click become a stool donor. Check out all the steps and get paid $500 per stool. If you have a bowel movement every single day, it can total to $180,000 per year. Tommy, we still at this stage don't have a buyer for yours. So you Um, get paid to poop, Kate. Is this in America or everything? Well, you talk about there's like um, when you reset your bowel, that's a process you can have, isn't it, Tommy? And you do it by inserting someone else's fecal matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can send it. Tommy doesn't want me to go into it. You can pop it it into the post. Yeah, but see, I I I think it is, it's it's a pretty hard process to do. That you know, you know, when you have to give a, or you, you've got to give a sample, it's really hard to do. Like it's oh, not you mean to easy. Get it in the container. It depends yes. on your, your, your well, diet. It, stuff, depends no, but on I, whether it's. But it, you're not trying to land it in the container, are you? No, 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 no. But see, people are disgusted by even thinking about grabbing the sample, if you right. know what I mean. Because it's warm. Fitz is well, uh, no. halfway up a ladder. <laughs> so he's got the container on the ground and he's about to <laughs> try and perform Just a miracle. going to need another one, BJ. <laughs> Move the target an inch to the left. <laughs> Trick shots. <laughs> Landed it. James in Collaroy, have you got a life improver for us? Yeah, good morning, guys. I've discovered that oh, if you, when you go to the beach, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> before you go in the water, you, when you take your songs off, you actually turn your songs upside down yeah. so that when you come back after your swim, you put your feet into coolish songs and they're not oh. blazing hot from the sun. Oh, yes, my God, it'd be James. almost like putting a towel on top of them. No. Well, if no. I, if you're just going, you're such. This is such a man life improver because this is assuming that when you go to the beach, it's just you and your thongs. Like when when Nothing I go to, to the beach, there are seventy five oh. bags mm-hmm. and towels yeah. and sunglasses and screaming children and, and water bottles and SPF and oh. a spare towel and yeah, oh, oh makeup. Oh. Go away. It's bit. just Jimmy and his thongs. Robin Monavale, what's your life improver? Uh, you know when you get when you get water marks on a kitchen bench top, like a timber bench top yes. or a timber table, oh, yeah. a dining on your table. coffee table. Yes, I yeah. heard this one. Yeah, you get condensation off your beer or your drink or something rather. Mm-hmm. Um, leaves the water mark and it's quite unsightly, disappointing. Um, basically, you just get a tea towel, put that over the top of it, heat up your iron, and iron over the top of it, and it actually draws the the <sighs> moisture out of the timber. Really. <laughs> Oh, do you okay. mean like the white rings sometimes? Yes. You know when you have it, yeah. yeah. On a timber table. Oh, right. See, that, is a, that is a ripper because yeah. that does happen on timber tops quite a bit. Well, you're I like steaming that. it out. It does. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't affect the varnish or the gloss? No. no. Jerry, let's yeah. go to Thanks. Jerry. Okay, uh, everyone else has lost no, interest Rob but Rand. me. Rob, I'll, spe- I'll, I'll call Rob after the show. Yeah, do you have a chat with Rob after nine? <laughs> Jerry in Penrith, life improver. Oh, you know when you've got your... Sorry, my kid just fell off the lounge. She's okay. That's okay. Um, You'll be right. (laughs) Anybody got a hack for that? No. (laughs) Don't have kids. (laughs) Too late. Um, 
when you've got family coming to stay and you've got to pump up that um, the inflatable mattress, yeah. Yeah. instead of using the manual pump and working up a sweat, all you've got to do is cut up a water bottle reconfigure it a little bit, you manoeuvre it a little bit and put it on the end of your hair dryer and all of a sudden you've got an automatic pump. That's not oh, bad. I suppose. What kind of water bottle? Like a or just like you a know, Mount like, Franklin. Like a Mount Franklin yeah. or something, yeah. you know, and just put a bit of tape around just it. Just tape it up. Yeah, how does that you know. That's good. Oh, Jerry, Jerry thank That's you, good. Jerry. Janine in Denninson, um, give us a life hack. Okay, so for all those people that need to write an important letter or an email, um, copy, paste, put it into Google Translate and play it back and it will tell you if you've, um, yeah, you can see if you've made any mistakes or not. You can send off the perfect email. Oh, well, no, that's well, that's spell checker, isn't it? Is that, that they do that already, don't they, or no? Well, it plays it back to you, and you can listen to see if it's um, yeah, the audio you version. Mistake. So you're listening yeah. to the audio version you of your email. Missed a, yeah. a word or something. Oh, you've got your own audio book on your own emails. Yeah. That's awesome. And then if it's, you know, you don't know if you've spelled it incorrectly, or that the audio, <laughs> the audio computer voice can't say the word. Well, sometimes you miss a word. You know, you and do. it doesn't matter you how do. many times you read it, you've forgotten to put the in. Mm, Janine is thorough, <laughs> very Bian- thorough. Bianca in Liverpool. Poor life hack, Bianca. Hi, guys. Hi. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I work in an office um, and I bring my food in sometimes to work. And every time I put my name on it, it always gets eaten, especially if I bring, in, I make like a gay time slice. Yeah. Yep. So I have learned that if I put my CEO's name on it, no one touches it. Good idea. Oh, good a, idea. Yes. So if you put Kate Ritchie's name on it around here, no oh. one's going to touch it. No, um, but that's quite fraudulent. That's quite clever, Bianca. And how often do you make gay time slice? Probably about two times a week. Oh, my <laughs> no God. No way. Can you send me the recipe? It could, fits in with sure, the cake, Richie. Thank you. Could you send me it made? Yes, of course. Yeah, oh, 33 Bianca. Saunders Street. That'd be great. That's a, go- <laughs> a great way to kick off 2024. James, Rob, Jerry, Janine, Bianca, you're all in the running for Taylor in Tokyo. You and a mate, flights, accommodation, $1,000 spending money and seeing Taylor Swift at the Tokyo Dome in Japan, Tokyo. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Fitzy, you had a big day at the cricket yesterday, mate. Yeah, we did have a big day at the cricket. Um, Decided to take the three generations of Fitzgerald. So my old man, Mick Fitzgerald, who's... Didn't know this. Dad's hitting 80 next year, guys. He's hitting 80 years of age. Still loves his cricket. He's got a membership there, and he went with his son, myself, and my two boys, Houston and Lennox. He, Huey's right into his cricket at the moment as well, loves Travis Head. So it was a great day, but the thing is, Dad is about to hit 80 now, and he's just complains the whole day. What was wrong yesterday, <laughs> besides seats too, everything? Seats are too hard. Why are we walking so much? Why did you go this way to get to the Oval? Like, uh, why um, are you driving? You should, you should have gone down this road. Yeah, but Kate, isn't like it about the journey? Like you were saying, three generations not at 80. of Fitzgerald men at the cricket, you know? Isn't it? it all mm. those things are part of the adventure. What a moment. Well, it's, yeah, there was a moment in the car where I got a bit emotional and said, you know what, boys, this is you've got to realise that this is really special that we're going with Poppy to the cricket and there's three generations of Fitzgeralds. Mate, you've gone the wrong way, Ryan. <laughs> well, so we're talking about it, right? And then I heard... I heard the two boys whispering in the back seat. And then Huey pipes up and goes, Dad, Huey and I have decided that we're not going to have kids. We don't want kids. We're not even going to get married. So would you guys be angry if we didn't continue the Fitzgerald name? Mm. And there was, Dad piped up straight away, was not happy at all. Because the Fitch, and then he's going through the history of the Fitzgerald, the Irish name, and where we came from, and you've got to continue it. And I actually had to ponder quite a bit and think to myself that I wonder if there are people out there that d- decide not to have kids 
and end the bloodline yeah. or end the name, the surname there and then. 13, 20, 4, 10, if you know a story, and what was the reaction of the family when you said, well, I'm not going to have children, or you may have had girls and the, and the name wasn't continued mm. and it ended with you? Because you only have a sister, don't you? Oh, I have a sister, and Holly. has she changed her, does she have a married name? Do you know, it's an interesting one. Holly kept the Fitzgerald name, but obviously they've had three sons now, her and Brett, and they're Shuttleworths. So the Fitzgerald name will not continue oh, with that family. Right. So the kids have, yeah, the kids have got dad's then, name. Had you considered it ever before? Like until the boys piped up on the, on the back seat? Was no. there just an assumption that, you know, and they will go on to have children? Mm, and those, they're quite wise. Those children will go on to have children? I, I didn't think about it at all, Kate. No. This is why I thought this is a big, a great conversation. If you know of someone that did end the bloodline or the name in that family, what was the reaction from the family? Because some of the most famous men out there, Mozart, okay, so there's no more Mozarts or in that family. Abraham Lincolns, there's no more Lincolns. They've died out now. Oh. Another, oh. An, another name often mentioned as having no remaining descendants is famous American author Mark Twain's. Oh, no Twain's. No Twain's. Tommy, you have an interesting one in your family, don't you? Because... Inga didn't take your last oh, name, yeah. did she? Yeah, yeah, that's a point of contention in our household. Did you want her to? Oh, it would have been nice, but she she is the youngest in her family. She wanted to keep her surname. But the kids are Ivies. They are, yes. Yeah, I had, thank a, I had God. a win there. What yes, do you mean, touch and thank go. God? Touch and go. Salmon. Yeah, well, that's my you wife. I don't want to carry that salmon. name. That's a, salmon. Oh, How do like you spell that? Break. That's a very. Salmon. As in salmon. Oh. Mm. Well, it's no whip fly, but you it's know. whip flea to start <laughs> yeah. with. Oh, my apologies. Yours, I mean, of the team, your well, name yeah, is the least appealing. <laughs> appealing? It depends on what part of the world you're from, Kate. It's sorry, yeah, we're it's from not Australia. Campbelltown. <laughs> we're from Australia. Sorry, Campbelltown. Right? Campbelltown. Campbelltown. Richie's from Scotland. Yeah, and, and this country is celebrated <laughs> on its diversity. Celebrated or celebrated? Ah, I said, Fitzy, I love it when you do that. <laughs> you don't do that. That's one thing you don't do, Ryan James. Well, that's it. And if you want more Fitzy and Whipper and Kate Ritchie, make sure you check out another podcast of ours. It's where I call out Whipper for not inviting me to New Year. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he did invite me. You he did, invited. He, he did invite me, but um, I still had something to say about it. Have a look. Fireworks. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.